Every thought I saw the spark in your eyes. Hey everybody, my name is Lynette and today we are working in my dye studio, aka my garage. Um, I normally am, when I'm working out here, dyeing uh, knitting yarns and spinning fibers, usually from wool and other animal-based fibers. And that is my small business. I sell hand-dyed yarn and fiber. Um, today I'm doing a completely different experiment. Uh, we are still dyeing, and I'm still dyeing on fiber, but instead of yarn, we're doing it on fabric. Um, today we're testing, I bought some of these um, silk scarves. This one is a chiffon, just to use as test pieces. And the thing that we're dyeing with, instead of my usual, you know, acid dyes and fiber reactive dyes that I use on the yarn and fiber, um, which I still could use some of those and I might still, but today what we're trying to get a certain effect is the um, bleeding tissue paper. Um, if you're going to try this effect, you have to get the, the tissue paper that specifically says bleeding tissue paper on it or bleeding art tissue on it. Uh, this brand is Spectra. There are, are other brands. I bought these from Dharma Trading Company and they have a few different sets. This particular one says uh, assorted colors, 20 assorted colors, and this one has a black and a brown in it. And then they also have different sets that have warm colors, cool colors, etc. I bought them all because <laughs> I wasn't sure what to expect with these. And what we're basically trying to achieve here with these is to accomplish sort of a watercolor rainbow effect over a sheer fabric. And the reason for these experiments is one, it's fun to experiment with new things and I love color. It's literally my business to, to uh, play with color and put different colors together. But in this particular case, it is not business at all. My youngest daughter is engaged to be married next summer and she has always been in love with rainbows since she was very young and she wants to incorporate pastel rainbow colors into her wedding. One of the things that she wants to do is to be able to have a sheer overlay, um, like a, an overskirt over the, the bottom part of her wedding dress that is pastel rainbow kind of watercolory effect. So this is what I am experimenting with in this video. So this video is not really a tutorial because um, we're still learning about this here. I don't know yet. I haven't experimented enough to know what the best methods are to get different effects. By the time I get through all of the experiments, I'm sure I will have a much better idea. But I just kind of wanted to show the process and tell you what I'm doing here. This has been pre-soaked in, um, well, we washed it first with a textile de detergent and to get out any, you know, surface oils or anything from handling in the factory or anything from your own hands, just so it doesn't cause a resist of any kind. And then we pre-soaked it in water with some vinegar. And then we have a spray bottle here that we filled um, half with water and half with vinegar and we're going to use this to wet the tissue um, as I'm applying it over the top um, and then also afterwards um, to kind of help move the colors around uh, try to blend them a little bit. We've laid it out flat and now I'm just going to start kind of randomly applying some of the tissue papers. Now we chose to tear the tissue papers into pieces. You can cut them. You can also pre-order, if you order this tissue online, you can pre-order it in cut pieces. They have squares and hexagons and circles I think I've seen. So if you don't care about having sharp edges, um, you might even want to design that way on purpose then you can certainly order the pre-cut pieces and you can obviously use scissors and cut the tissue yourself. 
we decided since we were going to be blending edges anyway to just go ahead and tear it into pieces. We didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to making certain shapes or anything. Just kind of tore it into pieces that are like, you know, hand sized or about that. Um, maybe some a little larger, some a little smaller. And we're just going to lay them onto the wet silk. And because the silk is wet, they'll stick a little bit. But in order to release the dye from the tissue, you really need to get it wet. So usually we'll apply a couple pieces and then spray it a little bit. And you'll, you'll see pretty quickly the, that the dye starts to come out of the tissue and transfer to the fabric. In this particular case, I am specifically experimenting with some of the very lightest colors because um, of our last experiments we used darker colors and they really are a little bit too vibrant for what we're going for. So we're trying some of the lighter colors to see if they'll transfer enough dye to make a pastel color or if we have to try another method yet. So we're using like the yellow and the lightest color pink and the lightest color orange, the lightest color green. And in some cases I'm doubling or tripling even the layers because I'm just not sure if they're going to show because they're so light. And in some cases I'm layering different colors together. Like the orange, we'd really rather have kind of a peach color. So I'm, I'm kind of putting an orange like over a pink and hoping that maybe that makes it a little more peachy. So we'll see what we come out with. So you do want to work in a space where you can get things wet. It doesn't matter if you have some dripping dye somewhere, you can clean it up and it'll be okay. And I also have uh, aprons that I use in my dye practice that I try to remember to put on when I'm working with dye. It does, I don't always remember. And you're gonna want gloves on your hands for sure because they will stain your hands. It'll come off after you wash them a few times. Um, it's probably not going to hurt you that much, but just in general, especially if you end up doing this a lot, then you should definitely keep the dye off of your hands. And also because you don't want to transfer it accidentally to something that's not dyed. So you definitely have to take some of those precautions. There is a lot of water involved in this technique. Um, doing it outside would be a great idea. So after I have laid out all of the tissue paper, I'm just going to go back and look at the very edges. Sometimes you, you'll miss a tiny little portion and you definitely want, or at least for the look that I'm going for, I definitely want to cover every little piece of this. I, want to I don't want any white areas left. So I'm going to go back and check my edges, apply a couple more little pieces if I need to, fold over any pieces of tissue paper that uh, maybe overlapped onto the table and just make sure everything's the way that I want it. See if there's anywhere I want to apply another piece. Maybe it, it only was one layer and it needs two. And then we're going to leave this to set for 10 or 20 minutes. Yeah, you can leave it longer if you want, but if you want to be able to manipulate the colors, you don't want to leave it too long because the longer it sits, the more set they get into right where they are. So now we're back, we've let it sit for a little while and I'm going to peel off all of the tissue paper and I'm just kind of setting it aside. And um, some of this tissue paper still has a fair deal of dye left in it. So you can use little pieces of it to squeeze more dye out if you need to drip it in certain areas or you can use it uh, to dab like you see me doing here, different areas to extend it and kind of push the, the dyes into each other to blend a little more. And that's what I'm doing here. I'll remove all the tissue paper and then I'm going to use it and some new pieces of tissue paper if necessary to just blend and extend these areas a little bit more, make sure there's no wrinkle looking marks or anything. And then the next thing I need to do with this is to actually set the dyes. So because I have a dye studio, the easiest way for me to heat set something is to use these hotel pans. That are, these are usually used in restaurants to cook large quantities of food. And um, I'm going to put them in my tabletop steamers uh, to set the dyes.
So now it's all done and I've hung it up to dry and it has dried overnight. You could also put it in a dryer on no heat or low heat um, if it's silk. You do need to pay attention to what fabric you're, you're using and if it can go in the dryer. Um, if you have wool you're not going to want to do that because agitation and heat can cause it to felt and shrink and the fibers to kind of all bind up together. and unless that's what you're going for and that's another <laughs> that's another video um, you then that's not what you want so uh, in this case it doesn't have to go through the dryer so um, unless you're in a hurry you can just hang it to dry it's this particular fabric is very very thin and it dries really pretty quickly um, you don't even need overnight it's I don't know maybe a couple of hours it's it's dry maybe not even that long but I did let this one sit overnight and so uh, let's see what the result is. Soaring in the wind A ribbon